If you like fashion, you probably feel the need to buy more than ever to participate, but I'm not talking about clothing. Online fashion content seems to be presenting the home as an accessory. Brand lookbooks are becoming obsessed with real-world indoor settings. Clothing retailers sell us candles and hand soaps alongside our new hoodie. Being fashionable apparently requires more than cool clothes. Why is everyone suddenly buying luxury candles? Is your home just an extension of your wardrobe? And if you like shoes, do you need your gaming PC to look like one? This is Alfred here. Let's talk about whether you should fashionize your entire life. I know what you're thinking, surely the short form videos are to blame. TikTok and Instagram reels are giving us all brain poison and forcing us to consume more products. To be fair, if you look at clothing on these platforms, you'll probably see people either talking about homeware items as well, or featuring them as glorified props in their content. It might give you a sense that being a fashion MF isn't just owning the right clothes, but owning the right clothes, home fragrance, sofas, decorations, collectibles, it gets a bit exhausting. Having cool stuff though is hardly new on social media. The Instagram lifestyle influencer era was all about consuming the right products and the right brands in every stage of one's life. The top dogs of the hype beast era, well, they didn't just have cool supreme clothes, but all the cool supreme accessories from beach balls to bricks to boxing equipment. And sneakerheads had a weird obsession with very specific collectibles like Cause Companions, Takashi Murakami stuff, and Bear Brick. Fashion has always been linked to other cool stuff. If we care about design, aesthetics, or luxury brands in clothing, surely we should care about that in other categories too. But now I feel this link has evolved. We're not just buying non-clothing items from our favorite clothing brands, nor are we collecting stuff just to go alongside our collection of shoes. When we see people talking to us about fashion now, it tends to be done in this very personal way, and it's done in people's homes. The connection between what people are wearing and what people have around them is closer than ever before. It connects these previously separate interests. Sometimes they even become an active part of the show. The result is the things they carry, the things in their home, they aren't just the background to the fire outfit, they are directly part of it. And thus, we end up feeling similarly. The implication, good taste in fashion is about good taste in clothes and also about good taste in this other stuff. It's not even just about influencer content. Increasingly, brand lookbooks are shot in these real-world locations with sofas and rugs, not just a plain backdrop, directly linking clothing and homeware. Retailers are now following suit, doing that in a multi-brand environment. And in fact, fast fashion has been ahead of the game here. Let's say you want the cool environment to go with the cool fit. What sorts of things do you actually need? What kind of items are we talking about? Here's the quick Antoine guide to popular items right now. For fragrance, diptyque and malinum girt candles are essential and you need enough Aesop toiletries to cover a Patrick Bateman level skin routine. I simply am not there. For lamps, you need that Vitra Akami, but luckily you can pick up an Ikea equivalent, which will pretty much do the same job. Also, anything orange and round immediately gives you fashion points. Of course, you need that Eames chair if you've got unlimited money, but the Ligne Rose Togo is also pretty popular too. Yes, I actually bought one of these in 2022 without really realizing how popular they were or how popular they are now. So this isn't a list of me hating on stuff, by the way. I genuinely like this. And you've also got tech items. The iPhone has been a fashion accessory forever, but AirPods Max, of course, are also a bit one. Some things are weirdly specific too. I've seen so many people with this exact Lego Porsche model. And what about that one Tom Ford book that is in literally every celebrity house store? This had better be the world's greatest coffee table book. To be fair, I've also seen quite a lot of people with that Nike off-white book, so I guess I'm not that much better. This stuff shows up a lot, and even if you don't spend much time looking at fashion content online, you can be sold a new candle or hand wash or lamp literally as a fashion accessory to your clothing on some of the biggest retailers like Mr. Porter, Matches, and End Clothing. Not just online either, physical locations dedicate space to them. The End store in London has an absolutely enormous selection of homeware items and cosmetics. And it should be stressed, these are not general purpose department stores. These are clothing retailers specifically. I also don't think it's a coincidence that we see fashion brands creating and collaborating on homeware products more than ever. But the placement of home goods where clothing is sold sends the clearest possible signal. These goods are fashion. 
But is that a bad thing? While fashion does have a reputation for gatekeeping and a need to buy into certain brands or consume the latest trends in order to be considered cool, now we have even more stuff to do that with. It's like the barrier is being raised. There's an implicit pressure that you'll be taken more seriously as a fashionable person if you also have the right fashion adjacent items too. Retailers are happy to encourage this. No doubt candles and toiletries have excellent margins. And just like clothes which fall off the trend cycle, these items need to be purchased again and again. After all, I am literally burning money right now. I also think it creates a tension around self-expression. It used to be the case that clothing was a public form of that. You go out wearing the clothes you want, anyone has the opportunity to see them. Your home was a chance to express yourself privately. It's only really for you and a select group of people that you invite into that space. But we invited the world in by sharing content online and now our home spaces are available to anyone. At the very least, it's normalized to have interior products fit for public display and enjoyment because that's what we're so used to seeing from others. I think my ancestors would have an aneurysm if they found out that 200,000 people last week saw my living room in a TikTok. In this context, these items are almost signifiers of good taste. The Aesop hand cream in the bag, the diptyque candle on the coffee table, these create a little bit of a performance. They say, well, I am so sophisticated, my taste is so good, that even these private items that I have that normally wouldn't be shared with other people, well, these have this, if you know, you know, luxury, tasteful, minimal, sophisticated quality about them. Except these spaces aren't private anymore, and everyone knows what these items are. This isn't the same trend as quiet luxury, but I definitely think it's the same forces at play here. This is a great time to remind ourselves that often people we see online in content create these environments and backgrounds and use these other items as part of the content. These signifiers of good taste are a useful shorthand for you can trust what I'm saying about fashion because look at these tasteful, fashionable things around me. We don't have to hold ourselves to those same standards because they're not representative of the consumption patterns of a regular person, however impromptu or authentic that content looks. So I'm afraid an expensive candle isn't going to save your mid outfit. But more importantly, if you've got some fire outfits, well, you don't need to buy an expensive lamp to validate those. And I can say that because over the years I've bought some of these items that I'm talking about here. Take these fashion brand candles, for example. Now I bought these on quite a heavy discount. I certainly don't regret doing so. I think they have a really nice smell. They're more delicate and subtle than a cheap candle, I think. And in general, high quality candles are made with natural ingredients, so they're less harmful to breathe in than, you know, chemicals and stuff. I also like how similar to the APC brand, they're pretty understated and chill. They're not too attention grabbing. However, I was probably at least partly encouraged to buy stuff like this because of seeing it so much in fashion content. It kind of felt like, well, everyone else has got these cool luxury candles, so maybe I'm missing out on something. And I purchased them on fashion retailers, in some cases literally alongside clothing items. These were an accessory. And I'm not a candle expert, so while I really like the design of these, I really have no context as to whether this is a good candle for the price. I'm really in two minds as to whether fashion opened my eyes to this nice new category of things that I can take pleasure and enjoyment from, or whether it just encouraged me to spend more money than I really needed on this category of things I didn't know I wanted because of their close proximity to my interest in fashion. Being conscious of that tension I think is definitely gonna help me when it comes to future purchases. Am I buying a nice candle or am I just buying a nice fashion accessory? The good news I suppose is things like this make really good gifts for fashion fans because of that closer connection now. And they're a relatively affordable way to feel part of that fashion tribe. With so many different fashion aesthetics around, you can't really buy into all all of them, but you can pick up a cool IKEA lamp that's similar to a load of other people and instantly feel that sort of fashion community connection a little bit. Maybe that's a bit sad, buying something to feel a superficial connection to someone, but I do think it can pave the way for genuine interactions too. I've really enjoyed the occasions where people have asked about the random stuff that's in my backgrounds of videos, even if they have nothing to do with fashion at all. With that said, I have to talk about the craziest and maybe the most relevant thing that I own to this discussion, which which intersects with quite a few of my interests. Yes, it is the gaming PC that looks like a shoe. 
So Cooler Master sent me the Sneaker X a few months back and I did some content for them on other platforms. And of course, this is gonna appeal to me as someone lamenting the days when tech was cool and weird rather than everything being the same ultra sleek design. I even have a tiny one in the background. How adorable is this little guy? Now this, the full-size version, not this miniature one, is at a superficial level a product that's worse because of its fashion adjacency. Cramming all of these PC parts into a small and very non-standard chassis is expensive. For the same price, you could get a higher spec machine if you opted for a conventional MIDI tower or even an ITX build. The semi-open design is less practical. You're gonna need to dust it more frequently and God forbid you ever spill a drink anywhere near this thing. The case is missing easily accessible USB ports. In fact, if you wanna plug in or unplug anything, you gotta unscrew this panel at the back to do so. Looking at this spec for spec, the conclusion is that sneakerheads who want to connect their love of shoes to an interest in gaming, they need to spend more and end up with a product where sacrifices still need to be made in terms of usability. However, it's also more interesting than the spec sheet lets on. This was originally made back in 2020 by a PC modder JMDF, who built it as an homage to his love of sneakers, and he won a contest for best art direction for that mod. Cooler Master liked it so much they worked with him to turn it into a full production model. Clearly it has a little soul to it, and the fact that this exists is a real feat of engineering, for example using the Azus Pro Art graphics cards, because those ones have a slightly smaller footprint. And you can really see up close it's laced with complexity via the sheer number of panels needed to shape a usually rectangular thing into, well, this. And I do think there's value in that. We're not talking brand collab PC where they've added their logo to a conventional case and are then upcharging you for it. This is a complete reimagining of PC design. The fact that it's sneaker shaped is almost secondary to the fact that the modder and Cooler Master collectively have reimagined what a PC chassis can look like. And indeed their upcoming Shark X only takes that concept further. And JMDF more recently turned a PC into an entire sneaker store. If you remember last year's video about the RMT-02, I really liked the non-standard features like the metal frame. Even though it impacts day-to-day -day usability for the average user, it creates something uniquely valuable to that niche and specific audience. And I feel similarly about the Sneaker X. As a result, I didn't use this to replace my gaming PC. But what I did do is hook this up in the living room and used it for a console-like experience with PC power and something that is far more displayable than a conventional PC. I've even set it to boot into this menu which shows all the installed games across different platforms so you can easily pick one you want with the controller. It's powerful enough to give a good experience in anything I've played on it. We are talking a 7800X and an RTX 4070 Ti, whilst essentially being a cool homeware item that no other PC can really Really match. Cool because it's fashion related, yes, but also it's just a crazy piece of unconventional design. I don't think we're at the cultural point yet where anyone who's into fashion is under pressure to have their gaming PC clothing themed. It's probably a good thing, but some will no doubt be interested because they love shoes so much they want to theme their whole life around it. They are the type with the supreme accessory collection, wall to wall sneakers, and also shops or community spaces who want to have everything themed in this way. Uh, I saw they had one of these in presented by in London. London. Absolutely perfect location for it. Is there a better way to be bodied a Street Fighter than on a shoe? But I also see the appeal for PC enthusiasts who want a totally unique build and are interested in cool aesthetics. Their space is not just a functional one, but a personality-filled one, and they're happy to pay extra to get that. I'd certainly rather have one of these in my living room than my regular gaming PC. And that's the intersection for me where fashion and these non-fashion items can exist. After all, isn't the technical fashion that I like so much rooted in the idea of using performance specifications plus considering aesthetics and product design to make something interesting to fashion fans? Do you need any of this stuff because you like fashion? No, of course not. Nor do you need to share it with the world as a glorified prop. But I am glad that stuff like this exists. And I'd love to see more examples of products fulfilling their function whilst going further with creative design.
design. Now, someone release a rug that's like a giant Gore-Tex logo or something. Have you, like me, bought these sorts of on-trend homeware items as a fashion fan? Maybe you feel like you've spent too much money on these sort of luxury items which could have been used more sensibly or productively. Or do you consider this a positive relationship where being interested in fashion has helped open your eyes to these other sorts of things that you can take pleasure in as well? And most importantly, does your ideal gaming PC look like a shoe or something else? Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic. I think it's kind of an interesting one that a lot of people have not really acknowledged. But yeah, now we're here to do some thinking about it. So would love to see your comments. And if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like. It is super appreciated. And of course, we'll be back very soon with the next one.